In this lesson, we're going to walk through one of the more complex topics related to working with Git, and it is the topic of rebasing. And if you've never heard of or never worked with rebasing before, I think it helps before we walk through the syntax to take a look at the documentation. So I'll include this link in the show notes, and they provide a very helpful example right here on how rebasing works. So if you look right here, you can imagine that we have a master branch and then we have a feature branch. So imagine that you are on a team and you're working on a special feature branch and you decided to check out and create that branch right here at commit E. And that's where this little branch comes out. And you've created a number of commits on your own feature branch. And while that was occurring, you or some other developer kept on adding other features and other commits along the master branch. And so what that means is that the commits for F in G and all of those code changes are not inside of your special topic feature branch and there's nothing special about the topic name that's just an example so this is a feature branch and you may have all of your changes but you're missing all of the changes that occurred on F and the G versions and so what you can do is you can leverage the rebase tool so you can pull down all of those changes to your local repository they'll be on the master branch and then from there what you can do is you can rebase those directly into your own feature branch and so it would change the diagram from looking like this into looking like this and so theoretically what you will do is you will have d e f and g so these two commits that you were missing all the code for they have now been pulled into your feature branch and now you have access to the most up-to-date version of the code base now so far that's pretty straightforward but i want to point out that right here you may notice that the documentation adds these little dashes so it is no longer a b and c you may notice that it's a apostrophe b apostrophe and c apostrophe now this is not a mistake in the documentation this is a note from the creators of git to let us be aware that these commits are not technically the same commits that we had before and so this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated and I know a number of developers who simply refuse to rebase at all because they don't really understand the concept and I don't want you to be like that I want you to be able to use all of the tools available at your disposal so hopefully shedding some light on the process that's occurring will make a little bit more sense and so what rebasing does is it does it can't just move your pointer so it can't simply say okay we have this a b and c set of commits and then we're just going to take those and we're going to move it so that we've brought in all the code and now we simply branch off and it's like you created your branch right after g was made git can't work like that because you're essentially changing history you're changing a set of timelines and so that's where this can be a little bit hard to understand because the way git works is these commits are almost like duplicates of the commits that you had right here. So Git takes all of these and then it moves them to the front of the line. So it looks like you made all of you made all your code changes and everything after the G commit was created. And so this typically is not an issue if you're working on your branch just by yourself. Now, there is a very important rule to keep in mind, and that is that you should never, ever perform a rebase on a shared feature branch. And so there are a number of various reasons for that, and some of them go into some very advanced 
uh, topics with Git and the way that commits are formed. And we don't really have to go into that in order to understand that you simply shouldn't do that. So in other words, if you have a big feature branch, you're working on it and you're working on that same branch with a few team members, never perform a rebase. As long as you do that, then you're going to be perfectly safe. And the reason is because notice how we created these new three commits right here, how Git did that for us. If we rebase and then someone else try, that's working on the same feature branch, branch tries to pull down all of the latest changes to the branch, they're going to end up with all kinds of conflicts and they are going to really, really despise you. And in fact, I know people who've been fired from a job because they performed a rebase on a shared branch. So just know not to do that and you will be perfectly fine. I'm going to put in the show notes a very good description on why you wouldn't want to do that. But for right now, with your current understanding of Git, just know we shouldn't do that. So we're going to walk through an example on the right way to perform a rebase so you can do that in the future. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create some kind of change. It really doesn't matter what the change is. It can be in the readme. And here I will make this change where I just add some new line under the heading. So I'll say another code change and I'll save this as the commit message. We can pretend that this is someone else on the team who has made a change. But instead of just running git pull, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. So I'll say git checkout testing rebase. And it would help if I spelled checkout correctly. So git checkout dash b. And so this is gonna create our new branch here called testing rebase. And I'm gonna make a few changes. So I'm gonna come into the git ignore, or let me see, I'll, I'll just add it to our Python code right here. So I'm gonna add some new function and it doesn't matter what it does. And that is all we need to do on that side. And so if I come and I type get status, you can see that we have our changes. And you can imagine that you made 100 changes. It does, that part doesn't really matter. We just know that we've made changes and our current repository, so if we look at our readme file, it does not have the changes in master. And so if we want to do that so that our local branch has access to all of the latest code, the way we can do that is I'm going to first add a commit for this file. So git commit and say added new Python code. And that's all I have to do on that side. So I'm going to check out into the master branch. And from here, I can run git pull. This is going to bring me down the latest version, if I can type the password right, this is gonna bring down the latest version of the application. So now if I look at the readme, you can see, oh, did I not put that in? Let's see. Oh, so I have git project, I'm in, oh, and this was a problem. I added that in the feature branch. So let's switch here, make the change to master, and that's the reason why it was missing. So added to master. We can update this. And now when, when I run git pull, this will actually pull this down. So I'll run git pull now. Enter the passphrase. And now you can see we have our change. So I'm gonna run vim see the readme and we have our updated change. Now, if I go and I take a look at our other branch, so if I say git checkout and testing dash rebase, right here, if I look at our readme, I am missing that code. And so imagine that this is a big feature that got added to the application and you need to have access to it in your current branch. Well, that's what we can use our rebasing process for. So what I can do is say git and then rebase master. 
And so if I run this, you can see it says first rewinding head to replay your work on top of it and then applying added new Python code. So I'm still in testing rebase. If I type get status, everything is good. And now if I come look at the readme file, you can see everything is up to date. So if I now want to start back working on the feature, I am perfectly fine. Now, if I type git log, now right here what you can see is this is where it can get a little bit messy because I've added the new Python code right here and you can see this is that well, this is exactly what got added and this is now what happened afterwards and here we said added to master so everything here seems like it kind of makes sense but let's try another test on this and this is going to show where it can be tricky so this has been added to master but this all followed the workflow where i made the change here on github first and then i pulled it down but now watch what happens if I reverse the order. So here, let's open up the Python code again, and I can just add something else. So we're adding some more code, and then let's add this, commit it, say, and just to make it super clear, we'll say updated Python code for rebase test so i've made that change and if i type git log here you can see that's exactly what it shows as the most recent one and then added new python code was the second one so so far so good let's pull this down so this is going to be the very latest change from a time perspective so added to master again and i'll add another commit message here and I'll even say to test rebase we're going to commit this change and after this is done now I can switch to the master branch because let me just verify I don't have anything here so yeah we have committed everything if I say git check out master and now run git pull this is going to bring down the very latest change and we can verify that by you can see it says added to master again and now if I say git rebase oh and actually let me change into the correct spot so git checkout testing rebase and now let's say git rebase master so let's perform the exact same task and you can see that it added the new python code updated the python code for rebase test so everything seems like it works but let's test something out really quick if i type git log notice what happened here the way it works is that our commit message even though this actually happened before we made the change so you watched and you saw that i added to master again to test rebase this is what i literally just typed in right here and this was the last commit that i made well the way that rebase works is it takes all of the commits inside of our feature branch so where it says added new python code and updated python code for rebase test even though both of these occurred before this process the way that git looks at it from a logging perspective and from a time order perspective is that these happened afterwards and this is the reason why this gets pretty tricky switching back to the documentation you can see that this is the process that occurred is exactly what it described so we performed the right set of steps we did everything we were supposed to but this kind of looks like we changed history a little bit because what we did was we point is so we moved and brought in all of the latest changes and even though they occurred before some of these other commits the way that git looks at it is that everything happened after the rebase and so all of our new feature changes all of our feature based commits all occurred afterwards and this can make for some very confusing times 
for other developers that are looking through the Git logs to see when certain changes took place or where it also can be tricky is when someone tries to revert back to a version and that version is missing some of the code because it actually occurred before the rebase. And so there are a number of issues related to that. And like I said, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using rebase, but it's important to understand what actually occurs. And once again, the number one rule when it comes to rebasing is you never do it with a shared a shared feature branch because that is going to take the little issue we saw with the time changes it's going to take that and exponentially create a set of problems when it comes to for other developers trying to merge those in so just make sure it's perfectly fine to use rebase but only do it on your own branches that you specifically are working on and not other ones that other developers are doing now, if you went through that and you're still confused, that's perfectly fine. What I'm just walking through and what we just examined is a topic in Git that many developers, even developers have been using Git for years, shy away from. And I don't want you to feel like you have to do that because I think performing this kind of process can be very helpful. And there are a number of times on the projects that I work in where I do wanna bring in the latest version of the code so that I can work with that code on my feature branch and I use rebasing for that. Just to make sure that you are intentional whenever you're using rebase. So you know exactly what steps are occurring. You make sure that you're only doing it on a feature branch that only you are working on. And then you're gonna be able to use it as a very powerful tool for managing your own projects.